Hi Flyers! Welcome to another episode of Saturday Life with Tutor. Saturday Life with Tutor is that series wherein I come live every Saturday to teach you something valuable at least concerning effective communication. Today won't be an exception. Before now, we usually have our Saturday Life with Tutor every Saturday at 8 a.m. Now we've moved that time due to some reasons from 8 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. Today we're going to be talking about dental. I want to invite my guest. Good. Okay, doctor, I already invited you. I hope you're there. Awesome. <laughs> awesome, doctor. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I can hear you as well. Awesome. Yes. It's good to have you here. All right. So tonight we're going to be talking about our dental health and how it relates to effective communication. So I will be talking from the communication and diction perspective, while our medical doctor, our dead dentist, will be talking from the medical perspective. Okay? So before we get started, why should we be talking about our teeth in the first place? Isn't it just teeth? Ordinary teeth. Naim, you come one day, a whole life session of bond. Why are you talking about this? So some of you may be asking, why do we have to talk about our dentition, our teeth in the first place? Why is it important? Because this topic has been on my mind for months, is it even years? But I don't want a situation where you ask me the solutions to your problem and I start going to seek refuge in uh, Google and asking Google, what if this happens? No, I don't want a situation where I would want to cram or memorize to come. I want to talk from my areas of uh, expertise. So, okay, I can talk about the, our teeth from the perspective of diction and communication. So why not have someone talk about it from the medical perspective in case you have questions to the problems that I may identify? What if I identify those problems and don't have solutions? Why are we discussing it in the first place if I don't have solutions to the pinpointed problems? So later on, I came across this Dr. Tim's uh, Instagram. It seemed Instagram suggested his video. I don't know. I just started to come across his post on my feed. Really, really interesting and amazing perspective, inserting humor, you know, teaching those terms, the big, 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 big medical terms that make many of us run away from medicine trying to simplify them in relatable ways. Oh, really, really, I was really, really wild and awed. I really need to contact this person. So at that time, he talked about one of his books. I don't know where it is on my shelf right now. I placed an order and that book is really, really amazing, simplified. If you want to know everything about your teeth from the medical perspective, how you need to take care of your teeth, you need to place your order and get that book. After reading that book, I just decided to invite our dead doctor. We need to discuss together concerning this dental care. So let me go first before you may be asking how is the teeth, for example, related to communication and diction. So I would go first and talk about it from the diction perspective. Like I usually remind you, we have 44 British sounds, 44 standard British and popular uh, the popular British sounds are 44 in number. And these, are you all here, please? Can you hear us? Please type in the chat box. I want us to type in the chat box as we move on. I don't want to stop and start asking you to confirm your presence. Type in the chat box. You're getting value. You can hear me. You have questions. Let me know. Type in the chat box. If you can hear us. No one is typing yet, so I want to confirm that before. We continue. Okay. So, okay. Diction, from the diction perspective, there are certain sounds. I told you we have 44 British sounds, right? There are certain sounds that you can't pronounce without the presence of your teeth. That is it. We have four of them. Two of them are called dental sounds. 
good dental sounds or incidental sounds. They're two in number. They're popularly called the TH sound. The sound in think, for example, TH, think, thought, them, TH, them, think, thought. Okay, they can hear us. Awesome. Theme, T H E M E, theme, T H E M, them, T H I N K, think, T H O U G H T, thought. Th that's how you pronounce the sound. If these, this, this, this <laughs> are missing, you won't be able to pronounce the sound correctly. You will be pronouncing something else. That's the, the, the dental sound. Those two sounds are under the dental sound. We also have the labial dental sounds. Those sound labial dental, so labial lips plus dental teeth, like a combination of your lower lip and your upper teeth. So the such sounds include your five. You won't be able to pronounce five if <laughs> your teeth is not. If the aren't set, you won't be able to pronounce them. Five. And another sound is the V sound in Venus, for example. Vi, to context, V-I-E, and so on. So that's what a diction, from the diction perspective, you won't be able to pr pronounce certain sounds if your teeth are missing. And that's why you see some children, because of their missing teeth, they won't, it's not possible for them to pronounce words correctly. So some parents are usually bothered like, ah, my child has a problem with this, 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 this. These sounds that you just outlined, your child at this stage, your child can't pronounce them because of this, this, this problem. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you have to note that that's from the dental and from the diction perspective, there are certain sounds that are connected. Without our teeth, we won't be able to pronounce them correctly. So let me get started again. For those who are just joining in, my name is Abdul Baki Hassan. I am the communication and diction expert and the lead tutor at Flying Colors Communications Academy. Today, I will be joined by my friend and medical doctor, <laughs> a dentist, Dr. Abraham Akibami. <laughs> so over to you, Dr. Abraham. Let's start talking from the medical perspective. Let's start from the... How does it connect to communication? For example, I want to communicate with people. Why should I take care of my oral health before making that come to reality? Uh, okay, okay. So thank you, thank you again for inviting me here. I think I, I was just I was taking notes. I was like, oh wow, all of this. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I okay, can hear you. Okay. okay, okay. So I said I was I was taking notes about how to the, all these labial dental I mean, and we're taught in school. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Um. So um. Basically, um. I I try to I try to um help people understand the fact that the dentition is is part of our beauty. You know, so um, the face, we, we have a whole industry um, surrounding the face and the head. That's the cosmetic industry. So we have the uh, braids or hair for women, for guys. We have cut our hair or have shapes or patterns, things like that. Or we dye our hair. Then um, uh, for the face, you have makeup, you have powder, you have all of that. For the lips, you have lipstick. But uh, it's interesting how we take care of all these other aspects of the face and the head, and then we leave out the teeth. Exactly. You, you, you understand? So um, you see people that, that uh, study a lot in their beauty, and then it just one thing, once they, once they speak, once they open their mouth to speak, it's just, it just like dropping a fly into a bowl of honey. It just spoils everything. <laughs> you get so uh, that's 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 why it's very important for for we all out there to to um take our dental health seriously so that it complements our beauty so there was this post i uh there was this picture i came across and i posted on my page 
so it was the, the there was this family. There was a man, daughters, and then his wife. Uh, so the man was missing an eyebrow and yeah. a tooth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I came across the exactly. Page. So the first thing ev everyone noticed was the missing tooth. Yes. And if not, if not, um, because the caption said, "Oh, um, the first thing, even if he's missing an eyebrow, the first thing you notice is missing tooth." So you're like, "Oh, okay, you now go to the eyebrow. Oh, he's actually missing an eyebrow." <laughs> so that's exactly. that's that's how powerful that's how powerful dentition is. That's how powerful um, perfect set of teeth are. Yeah. So okay. I, I think I've I've been able to answer that introductory question. Yes, exactly. I, a friend of mine <laughs> was discussing something with me last week and I found it difficult to face him as he spoke because, and this, so I want to ask the question, there are times nothing is smelling, nothing is exuding from the mouth of the person, the person just speaks and the other time the smell is putrid, what could have happened, what caused that okay. change? Okay, okay, that's that's relating to mouth odor, I guess. Yes. Okay, so uh, mouth odor is a very. Um... That I just talked about. It's never happened before, but last week, I noticed the mouth, the smell. I wasn't even able to face him for the one-to-one -one discussion. I had to just excuse myself, and we're still coming to the place of telling, discussing. How do we discuss these things? Because they're really, really. Vital and touchy issues. You don't so, want, just want to tell your friend, oh. Okay, so 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 the thing about mouth odor is that it's it's a very it's a very tricky and sensitive topic. You know, it's it's one of the if you want to bring bring down someone's self esteem, just say why your mouth they smell. If you want to end an argument, just say why your mouth they smell. Gabe, come on. <laughs> And then the arguments will just stop right there, and then people get all emotional. Uh, but this is this is what I say. Now, just like you said, that um, uh, maybe your friend usually no mouth odor. Then on that particular day, there was mouth odor. Like what exactly happened? So um, exactly. there's, there's this there's this term uh, I call I call it transient bad breath. So okay. I, I try to I try to differentiate between mouth odor and bad breath in the sense that um mouth odor it's like uh, it's like body odor you know you can the same way you can if someone walks past that has body odor it's, that's the same same thing with mouth odor if the person yeah. if the person comes into the room and then speaks you just know that oh something or someone came across <laughs> came inside the space so that's that's how terrible mouth mouth odor is but bad breath on the other hand and it's 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 um i, I call it transient in the sense that it's usually um so now so now there, there are times where um if if let's say you're fasting now for example you know as a muslim you have this long fast period or as a christian we have like this long fast period during that period of fasting, you're going to have some some certain amount of uh, bad breath. You get so fasting is one other one 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 cause of bad breath. Fasting, you, you, you understand. So um, if so, during fast, what what we usually uh, what I usually advise is that oh, just make sure you are sipping water, yeah, or you are talking. You just talk, but you know when you're fasting, you're not supposed to talk too much as, as well because you just want. When we're to... fasting, we're not allowed to eat at all. Exactly, exactly. So, so fasting is one is one um, is one uh, prolonged fasting. So it's not it's it's not just fasting; it's prolonged fasting. So if if you if you fast for one, two, three days, you know you won't have any form of bad reports. Maybe 10, 15, 21 days, 40 days, you know, there's there's a there's a level of bad breath that you're going to have. There's this other, there's this other second type of bad breath, 
that you might have whereby for quiet people if you're a quiet person like you don't talk much <laughs> yes so you get if you don't talk much and you're always quiet always by yourself you know yeah you are uh, you have conversations you're not, you're, you're not crazy you but <laughs> you're not crazy but i mean you just think a lot you're just yeah. very analytical like that so, so in that's the first person so if, if you've not spoken for like three four hours the first person you're going to speak to <laughs> yeah. the first person you're going to speak to who think that your mouth has been smelling of oil for all these years all these months and it's just exactly. that initial um outburst of air from the mouth you get that okay. that might that might just um, have like some foul smell just that yeah. at that instance so subsequent people that you subsequently there wouldn't be any any form of vibrate or anything but so again what I, what we advise for quiet people is that they sip water regularly you know they don't need to drink so much so that they don't have to keep going to the toilet you just sip gently rinse the mouth or for some we say just chew sugarless gum so emphasis on sugarless gum. So from my from my own perspective, I would like okay. to ask them: Why do you keep quiet in the first place? Why don't you talk to people? Because I usually encourage my people to always talk to others to express their thoughts. Because many people are silent, and that silence has negative effect on them. They don't know how to talk about their problems. It's usually, uh, that problem is usually rampant amongst people who are introverts. And they don't like talking about their problems. They don't like talking about their issues. They usually... ...says, for example, when they're by them. So with your laptop in your room, you may just be by yourself and not do other things. So you ask yourself, why are you quiet in the first place? And is your silence having a positive or negative effect on you? If you feel that silence of yours is, for example, I have something I call the confidence test. The test that you need to take in order to ask yourself, am I confident or not? So one of the questions in the, it's like a toolkit. You ask yourself the questions in order to confirm your confidence level. So some people may score five over 10, others six over 10, others two over 10. So one of the questions in the test is, do you always contribute to discussions that affect you? Like the discussion that you need to partake in, do you contribute to such discussions? So if you answer yes, it means you really, really pass at that level. And if you answer no, it means you need to work on it. So you need to ask yourself, why am I silent? Why do I usually keep quiet? Before we start talking about, okay, how do you, <laughs> how do you do things that won't make your mouth smell as a quiet person? Ask yourself the question, why am I quiet in the first place? For the wrong reasons or for the good reasons, or it doesn't even affect me in the first place. I don't have to talk. I live in a community where I have to live by myself. So that's when you, okay. So if it is positive, good. You listen to Dr. Abraham Akibami. Mm -hmm. If it is negative, you need to really, really work on it because many people are, if you try to investigate many things, many of the reasons why people are molested, why they're raped, why they're being punished for the things that they didn't do in the first place, you tend to see it because those things didn't start yesterday. It didn't start at the point where we started to investigate. It started long ago but oh they just felt like oh i shouldn't talk i shouldn't mm -hmm. say anything oh what would people say oh my husband i can't talk back not talking back at people that you need to respect for example but expressing your thoughts this mouth of ours these speech organs of ours are there so as for us to talk to express our thought just the one of the major reasons one of the things that actually make us different from animals is our ability of communication. Yes, the animals communicate, but they don't use language. 
they don't communicate the same. They don't have a systematic pattern like we have. We have a systemic structure, a language that we can, okay, I can say this, I can ease, I can even use my nonverbal cues. So if you're a quiet person, ask yourself, why am I quiet? And will my quietness help me along the line? Is it affecting me positively or negatively? All right, uh, doctor. So now you've been able to okay. tell us the difference between bad odor, mouth odor and bad breath. Okay, awesome. And then what we need to do if we have problems with any of them. So now let's talk about the, uh, our dentition from the perspective of appearance. So we've talked about it from the perspective of smell. Do you have anything to say, other things to say that I haven't asked you concerning Okay, because okay, the mouth order. Um, um, okay, so so what 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 I try to preach is uh, because um, that I I tell people to yeah you need you need to find someone you can confide in and like say oh I think I I think I have I think I have, before you conclude that you have mouth order or bad breath or whichever one you need one or two people that you can confide in like. Maybe your parents, your partner, your very close friend, your siblings. They know these people are not going to maybe take it out on you. They're not going to make fun of you. They're not going to make you feel any less. And just let them know that. See, see. I mean, I mean, I've been, not, I've been noticing that people either turn their face away or scratch their nose or lean back when I speak with them. And uh, I, I'm not sure if if my mouth smells. Can you help me perceive it? <laughs> yeah, yes, it's better. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. Because because there are a lot. I mean, people that have uh, mouth odor, it gives them. It affects their self esteem. Yes, it affects yes, their yes, self esteem yes. a lot. So, and then when it affects the self esteem, it can lead to depression and all of that. Yeah. And you before you even try to find out what the root cause. Of the depression was you, you, you it might it might take a while. Yeah, that's so, true. Yeah, so before and some there's even, there's one other type of bad breath that 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 we have is the bad breath that people think they have. Okay. Okay. So imagine it, bad breath. Yeah, exactly. They imagine bad breath. Imagine. Yeah, so, exactly. So maybe let's say my you and I are having a conversation. And then, for some at that just at that instance, you had to scratch your nose. Not not like my mouth was smelling, you know, but you just had to scratch your nose. Your nose was itching you. Then you just yeah. me, I just pick it up like ah, I think my mouth is smelly. And from that instance, I just have it in my head that my mouth is smelling. Exactly, exactly. So yeah. I tell people this: what you really, what you just mentioned is really, really important. And it's one of the things I teach in my public speaking classes that don't read everything that happens between you and the people you're talking to as negative. Mm -hmm. So there are many people, the reason why they have stage fright isn't because they don't have the content, isn't because they don't have what to say, isn't because they don't have the charisma, isn't because they haven't prepared, but because everything that happens wherever they're talking they translate those things as being negative. So for example, I, let's say you're talking to people and all of a sudden someone stood up. If you already have the sense of translating everything that happens wherever you're talking, if you already have the sense of reading negative meanings to everything that happens whenever you're talking, maybe you feel, oh, my English isn't that good. I can't speak with clear diction. I am not prepared enough, or uh, the imposter syndrome. People have certification concerning dentistry. They may still find it difficult to come live to do discuss this topic because they feel, oh, I'm not qualified to start talking. Hey, people will now join you. Ah, so that <laughs> many things may happen. So that may make them to translate everything that happened or read negative meanings to things that happened around them. Let's say, for instance, mm -hmm. you talk, the, such a person may be talking to people and someone decides to stand up and leave the hall, for example. If you read negative meanings to everything around you, that may affect your speech. And you may start thinking, yeah. oh, that's naturally left because 
of the fact that, hey, I'm not giving value or I'm saying rubbish mm-hmm. or the person is giving value. But why not read positive meanings to that thing? Why not say, okay, that person actually left to do something quickly in order to come and listen to me attentively? Exactly. Maybe the person exactly. will, yeah. So if you build that mindset, ordinarily, for example, if you leave the, if someone leaves the live session, for example, other people may feel, oh, from five, dropping to three, to two. That means we're not making sense. Let's conclude this session. But for me, because I have the growth mindset, I, t- I talk about two primary kinds of mindset. We have the growth mindset and the fixed mindset. The fixed mindset tells you, oh, I'm limited. I can't grow. Uh, this prob- there are many problems. People won't listen to me. But the growth mindset tells you, oh, you can grow. There is no limit to your growth. And everything that happens, happens for your growth. So mm-hmm. when you mention the fact that whenever people say, oh, <laughs> the other person may think, oh, <laughs> that <laughs> is actually referring to my teeth. And I actually, from what you said, after having this, I noticed that many people who have the problems of talking, uh, many, uh, the problems of uh, mouth odor and uh, bad breath, don't even know. They don't know that they have the problems. They still want to talk like others. So that actually affects me indirectly. You know, at 5 a.m. I have to wake up and go to the masjid before leaving my house. Because whenever I go to mosque sometimes, this assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, if some people's breath, <laughs> you just leave, if assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, ah, you just leave the masjid for them. So that actually affects me to say, okay, mine may actually be smelling as well. Okay. Because, yeah, so before I leave my house, I take my toothbrush out <laughs> and brush my teeth before, before I, I usually, that may be happening to me as well. And people will not want to tell me because it's a sensitive topic. <laughs> well, <laughs> well. Special. Well, the thing, maybe maybe one of these days, I don't know if it's allowed, we could come and give uh, oral talk in the mosque. <laughs> but um, <laughs> no, no, but, but, but the thing is, um, naturally, if you don't brush at night before going to bed, in the morning, yeah. your breath is going to stink. You understand? So if you don't brush at night, box. Before... In the chat box, please. If you're joining in, kindly type in the chat box. We're just feeling lonely. Type in the chat box, please, so we know you're joining us. Tell us if you're learning. Tell us if you're making sense. Oh, I continue. Uh, okay, so so uh, like I said, if naturally, if you don't brush at night before going to bed, in the morning, the, the breath is going to stink. You get so for for Muslims that always have to go 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 to pray by five, it's it's it is it is natural that um, if um, a Muslim brother or sister doesn't brush before going to the mosque, the breath in the mo- in the morning is going to st- stink. Now, if that person doesn't now brush the night before, it's going to be worse. <laughs> yeah, so. I don't know if you brush twice a day, but if you've been brushing twice a day, you notice that, I mean, it happens to me several times, whereby I brush, maybe sometimes I brush by 11 p.m. or maybe 11.50 p.m., just about when I'm going to sleep. So by the time I wake up, my, I, I, my breath is really fresh. And, I'm, and I just sit down, I'm confused, like, have I brushed this morning? <laughs> because <laughs> my breath is still then. I eat, I have breakfast. I go to work. Then maybe by midday, I'm like, I didn't actually brush today, <laughs> but I could yeah. do that. Yeah. So I could do that because I brushed the night before. Yeah, exactly. So my, my breath, my mouth felt really good and clean. So I mean, that confusion could come because I didn't I brushed. But any any time I forget to brush. Before going to bed, or I always know. I have, it makes like I wake up, I just brush. <laughs> Aside from brushing our teeth, is there any other thing, something like a perfume specifically made for our arrow care? 
okay, so so I I'm not sure those perfumes are readily available in Nigeria. I've not it's not something I readily see. I I don't even I, I've not seen anyone any perfume for the mouth. It's only in movies that I that I've seen them. And I remember one movie I watched when I was little. So there was this guy who then got toasted, babe, and he sprayed something in his mouth. I was like, oh, I have perfume now. And then I went to spray the perfume. And my mouth was so bitter. <laughs> but then I, I don't think, I've, I've not seen any uh, mouth spray. I've not come across any mouth spray. I guess there are certain guns that one can chew. I once said something like that. Yeah, go with true sugarless yeah. gum then, yeah. So let me just yeah. say one more, one last thing about um, bad breath mouth odor. Um, it's, um, it's what we call scaling and polishing. So many people here, I don't know, people here might have heard of scaling and polishing or teeth cleaning. So it's what you do to remove these um, um, accumulated materials or substances that hang around the teeth. So now the thing is that those substances also have the, they carry the uh, ability to cause bad breath as well. Okay. You understand? So most times when people come in and say, oh, I have bad breath, the first thing we do is to first clean around the mouth. Yeah, clean around the teeth. Then um, afterwards, if the bad breath, yes, I, I need to say this again, if the bad breath persists after cleaning around the teeth, then sometimes we refer um, such people to maybe the ENT doctor, so the ear, yeah. nose, and throat doctor, because they're if, called. If, um, la, um, some I've forgotten. Yes, I won't study class concerning it. <laughs> and, uh, maybe let me quickly Google it. So yeah. let me see ENT doctor. Okay, so because because. Uh, auto, uh, auto laryngologist. Yeah. Yeah, auto laryngologist. Yes, yes. <laughs> so because what, what I'm saying is because sometimes um, this bad breath might not might not originate from the mouth itself. So bad breath can either originate from the mouth or outside the mouth. Okay. So now if someone has chest infection, you know okay. the chest, the 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 esophagus, the trachea, everything. The tracker links to the chest. Then yes, yes. You know, when you breathe in, you breathe out. So you know the air coming out, if someone has chest infection, can be can be can be foul. So if yes. someone has um, a chronic st stomach ulcer. Okay. So if you have if someone has chronic stomach ulcer, that can also That's a yes, peptic ulcer. Okay. The person can also you can also translates into bad breath because there'll be some gas that will be released that then the person bulges out and things like that. So if there's air infection, like I said, because there's a there's a there's a connection between the air, the nose and the throat in the okay. mouth at the back of the mouth. So exactly if if there's an infection in any of those tracts, it can come out and will manifest as mouth odor or two. So we readily just say, so when, when, when I ask if the person has seen, so first question I'll say, is coming, see a dentist, let's do the cleaning. If they say it persists, we say, okay, we're going to see an ENT doctor. If the person, because I have someone that said, oh, I've seen an ENT doctor, I've seen a dentist, all of that. I just ask, do you have, do you have ulcer? She said, yes. Or oh, I said, go and see a, a gastroenterologist. You know, so, and then she sent me a message, oh, thank you so much, uh, this, this, and that. I didn't know. Yeah, so, so those are all the... the yeah, and some people, you know, we just, we just, exactly. um, some people, we just counsel them, I see, because they just think in their head that, oh, I have this bad breath. And then in, in such, in such cases, when people come in and say that, oh, I have bad breath, the first thing I do, the first thing we're trained to do, sort of, is to lower the mask. Okay. So we lower our nose mask while we're speaking with the person. So that the the person then, if we can, try the examination, the interaction, the mask is lowered. Then the person, at the end of the interaction, we, now, we tell them that 
do you did you notice that I didn't use the nose mask while I was examining, while I was treating you? And then you'll say, Oh yes, I did. And and then you say, during that whole process, I did not perceive anything. Mm, okay. Yeah, so but still they still say no, 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 doctor, you're making me feel good. I'm like, well, see, yes. if, there's, if there's bad breath, I will I will I'm not saying we use our mask because of bad breath, but <laughs> I'm just saying. I get, it. I get it. I get it. So now let's talk about dentition from the perspective of appearance. We've talked about the odor. We've talked about the bad breath. And you've helped us gain clarity. From what you said now, I just gained that the bad breath may be due to several reasons. And one needs to get to the roots of the matter before you know the exact thing to do in order to clear that. So we also, Oxta, from the perspective of appearance, I had a friend in secondary school, and whenever, he just as if he's like this, something like this, I think they call it a uh, bucked teeth. It's uneasy for him to close his mouth because the upper teeth, the upper jaw, for true, the teeth here, protrude and whenever if if he closes his mouth this is what you will have something like this after <laughs> so if he if he wants to close his mouth he has to force closing the mouth at last do you understand what i'm trying to say so for, yes, <laughs> for a person like that what can because i think it's whenever we want to abuse him whenever there is anything wrong between us that's what we just that's, that's <laughs> it. i know i know right <laughs> so it affects his appearance that's what you even see something like say things like that and we call him names <laughs> back then so what can someone like that do is it repairable uh Oh yes, sure, sure, sure. Um, most, most, most times we we refer the person to an orthodontist. So an orthodontist is a specialist that um, an orthodontist specializes in arranging the teeth. Okay. You understand? So um, yeah, for me, there are the, 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 some minor cases, orthodontic cases I can treat. treat. You no know, crowding, spacing, maybe anterior open by things that I can treat that. But for for people that that the um, mal we so we call it malocclusion. Malocclusion means okay. the teeth are not closing, are not interlocking the right way. So we call it malocclusion. Right once yeah, so once there's malocclusion that involves the bone. So there's malocclusion that involves the teeth alone, and there's malocclusion okay. that involves the jaw bones. Jaw bones. So, yeah. So, so if if it involves the jaw bones, that means the orthodontist, maybe the surgeon will have to be involved. But if it involves just the teeth, the orthodontist too will be involved, or any um, cosmetic dentist or general dentist that can handle the case will just rearrange the teeth. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, you know, we have that back teeth also. Then we have. Coloration. Imagine uh, black. Some people's teeth, front teeth, especially. What's the primary cause of of colored teeth? Yes, colored teeth. Black. Let's continue with the questions. Let, we'll come uh, back to the question. Yeah, we'll come back. So you can just maybe note that down. So, um, so, um, that. So, so, so let me talk about stains. Like, since, since you brought me to stains, so now there are, there are two broad categories of stains on the teeth. We have the external stains and we have the internal stains. So the external stain, I mean, just external on the tooth so you can clean that off now the internal stain is is part of the tooth 
So, you know, mm-hmm. most of us had this, had or have this uh, white shirt that we love to wear, you know, and then the color is stained. Exactly. The shirt is, the the... Shirt is, yeah, the shirt is clean. Usually clean, yeah. But the color is just it's stained, stained yeah. over time. So, so that stain on the collar is, is already part of the shirt. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, so that's 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 how that's the people even wash their clothes. They wash the white shirt due to that reason, not because everything is stained, but because of the exactly, exactly. So, so for the for the teeth as well, we have those kind of stains that are part of the of the of the tooth of the teeth. You understand? Okay. So, if for the external stains. Uh, you can they, you, you can have them from coffee, from tea, from cigarette smoking, from red wine, from um, palm oil foods. Uh, what again? Um, consume most of these things. Palm oil foods, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, red wine, and others. You mentioned yeah. red wine. Oh, I thought it's specific to cigarette smoking. Oh no 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 no! no, one, no, no. Agent, one agent yeah. is more negative than the other. Uh yeah, is So you, you know you know for smoking, smoking doesn't just affect the teeth; it affects you, from the smoking. Lungs. You could have uh, the person could have lip cancer, tongue cancer, mouth cancer, lung cancer. You know, so smoking just affects the body entirely. You understand? Okay. And and the the other effect of smoking is um stains on the teeth so those yeah. things are external so the other things that can result into external that can cause external stains are coffee drink coffee drinkers have a lot of stains then tea drinkers all this green tea chinese tea black tea whatever tea you drink deep tea, tea you know all of this can cause stains on the teeth as well. Mm-hmm. Then um, red wine, all those things. Food. So in general, as we as we we uh, as we take in food, we consume food. We they just stain the teeth along the way. You, you okay. understand. So so um, so now coming to for those external stains, the scaling and polishing. Brushing regularly, morning and night, will reduce them. Then scaling and polishing would also reduce this external stain. So scaling and polishing is cleaning of the teeth, of the of the teeth at the dentist. Oh, so now, what about internal? Okay, for internal stains now. Um, so what we do is we 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 fix. Uh, okay, so let's say this is this is the tooth, for example, now. Okay. This is the tooth, for example. Now, the internal stain. What we do is we we try to uh, we fix what we call veneers. So veneers can either be direct or indirect. So indirect veneers are like uh, I mean, ladies here will, will know this. You know, when they if you fix, you know, you people that fix their nails uh, have artificial nails. You know, you, you know they just carry that. Uh, fake nail and then just yeah, attach it. Yeah. Exactly. So that's the same thing with um, indirect veneers. So just we attach, so it's made in the lab laboratory and then it's, it's attached to the teeth. So you, I mean, that, that's, that, that's like the only way to achieve the extreme white color of the teeth. Then the other type of um, veneer, which is the indirect one, it's like you're painting your natural nails. Okay. Yes. Like awesome. Yeah. 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 So you know it's direct. You know you're painting it. The the indirect one. You're fixing it. Yeah. Attaching it. You're gluing it. Yeah. So those are the that's that's those are the two options for internal stains. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Because we actually we usually encourage people to smile, and then these the same people you're asking to smile when they smile, everyone would. Like, what? Why? Why is this 
faith like this. So I had to ask the questions. I think that discussion is related to this question. What can be used for teeth whitening for children with color change after losing the meek teeth? After the child lost the meek teeth, the teeth started to change. And the person is asking, what can be used for teeth whitening? And should they use uh, teeth whitening in that situation? And what could have caused it, doctor? Okay, so... Okay, so now, um, first of all, please and please and please do not, ha um, your, do not have teeth whitening done for children until they are maybe 18. So anyone that's 18 is an adult already. So please and please and please, no teeth whitening for children until they are 18. And why is that? The, the teeth whitening um, agents can affect the, the um, developing tooth. So now, the, each tooth, every tooth has three layers. Yeah, we have the outer white layer, the middle dentin layer, and the inner pulp layer. So now, as the the uh, at the initial stage of the of the development of a tooth, the pulp layer is the widest. So as the tooth is growing, the dentin and the enamel move further away from the pulp layer. Okay. You understand. So, if teeth whitening is done at that stage where the teeth are still growing where the teeth, the dentin and the enamel are moving away from the pulp layer, it can affect the pulp because that close proximity of the enamel and the dentin layer at that stage can um, affect the pulp. So that's why we say no teeth whitening for, for children. For children. children at all, until they're 18. So we should have, I mean, I've answered that. Then the other thing is... Um, change. Yeah, so for color change now, um, the milk teeth, that is the baby teeth, are whiter than the adult teeth. Okay. Yeah, so naturally... Oh, naturally, naturally yes. the milk teeth yes. are white than the adult yeah, teeth. So the, yeah, exactly. So the milk teeth are white. The adult teeth are, are creamy or yellowish. Or oh, they are creamy. Naturally. naturally. <laughs> naturally so so uh, i mean if you for those that have children or if you have a nephew or a niece or a cousin that is maybe uh around nine nine ten eleven if you ask them to open their mouth you see you see that the adults especially the front ones they, they are like milky in color then the baby teeth those ones you they are whitish in color. Mm -hmm. So so that's mm -hmm. that's natural. natural. But then if yeah. But then if uh, I mean this person asking, if it's now a stain, like we said before, a stain maybe from tetracycline. So if you're if you're a mother here, if you are I mean all of us here, I mean we have sisters, um, aunts, siblings, friends wives that yeah. will get pregnant during a pregnancy period please avoid the intake of um, the use of tetracycline so pregnant women should avoid the use of tetracycline during pregnancy because tetracycline there's what we call tetracycline stain yeah so that tetracycline stain it means that during if the mother took um, tetracycline during pregnancy. Now, that's that um, the chemical of the tetracycline can attach to the developing tooth, hmm. and then when it comes out, that's that's where you see people that have like dark yellow or dark brown color teeth. Oh. Yeah, those ones are from tetracycline stain. So, so mothers, please avoid yeah, the tetracycline. Are there other drugs? that pregnant women should be wary of uh well so so um i mean 
the only thing I know about pregnancy is that I just avoid tetracycline. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I mean, and that's that. That is the, I mean, to the best of my knowledge, that's like the only drug that causes stain because we actually give it a color, a name, tetracycline stain. <laughs> so, okay. Exactly, tetracycline stain. So it's from tetracycline. Yes. So, um, yeah. So, um, the lady that's asking, like I already said. Okay, okay, so I already said notice whitening for children, please. Yes. Then they are yeah, the natural. You said all the you're making all the questions already. Okay, okay, okay. And it's almost one hour, and I don't want to take your time as promised. So let's discuss this from the perspective of calling people's attention. Hey, my friend, you have a bad breath, <laughs> you have a mouth odor. How do we go about that? So let me go first from okay. my own perspective. Uh, words are really, 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 the, the presentation really matters. We can't be saying the same thing. You can, A can say the same thing. B will say the same thing. A will be killed and B will be promoted. So for me, if you're trying to call your friends, your family, your siblings to attention concerning this, the fact that they have poor breath or the fact that they have mouth odor, you need to be intentional with regard to your presentation. For in, you, you talked about people abusing others, telling them, oh, your mouth is smelling. But I see that now. Yes, the person may be, may feel, oh, why did you say this to me? But the person will not think that he or she actually has that problem. We just see that saying you have no sense. Yeah. This part of the <laughs> word when we see it as someone telling us you have no sense. If you tell me I have no sense, I won't think oh, you, you mean that in the actual sense of it that I had. I have no, no sense. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So how do you say it in the mm -hmm. way, if, so say the person has a smelly mouth, the person won't take you serious in the first place. So you need to ask yourself, how do I present this? And this is not exclusive to telling people that they have mouth odor or, or that the smell that comes from their mouth is putrid. It also involves you breaking uh, bad news, telling people to change something, trying to change people's orientation. You don't just say things the way you want to say them. You still need to ask yourself, how do I present this thing in a way that will help me get results? What's the result? Oh, I want this person to take action concerning this. So this cuts across other things like marketing your product. It's not just about come and sell, come and sell, come and sell. There is a way you would talk about your product without even asking people to buy and they would start asking, please, where do I pay? How do I pay? I'm really, really interested in buying your product. So one, know that presentation matters. Secondly, always go back to your goals. Why do I want to tell, why do I want to reveal this thing to this person? Why do I want to tell the person that the person has mouth odor? Okay, you think, oh, this person may be disgraced. Others must have noticed because the reason why I actually want us to discuss this is because I had a friend in my secondary school and I know the friend has problems. This is not about not brushing or uh, temporarily at all times. Whenever he talked back then, expect so sometimes at a point in time when he talked, no, this is not as if we trying to, we tried to abuse or insult him back then. Whenever, after he talked back then, we would ask, did anyone fart? It was worse to that extent, just as if someone farted. So I knew, other people knew. So one day I was just telling my friends, ah, there is someone in this school, if that person talks, it would just be as though someone farted. And everyone's, ah, sadik, sadik, sadik. You know? <laughs> Everyone knew, but no one wanted to have the discussion with him. So you need to ask yourself, 
what's my goal? What result do I want to have? Okay, I want this person to become a better person and not deal with this problem. So you can ask another person who you feel, oh, the teacher, for example, in the secondary school setting, it may be the teacher, it may be the hostel master, it may be his close friend. And there is a way you present yourself, there is a way you choose your setting that will make the person feel, oh, this person actually has my interest at heart. You can have the discussion in a close space. Oh, please, I want to see you later. The fact that you even called into in order to have the discussion will make the person feel, oh, this person actually want me to. But when you're telling that person in the gathering, oh, don't you know you have to? <laughs> the person won't feel good. So you can ask another person to tell, maybe that person is closer. So for instance, I see some of us do not create relationship before we correct. Yeah. And relationship is really, really vital in correction. So I tell people, most of the things that will make people accept your communication and your call to action, some of them are not even connected to your diction or your grammar. Some of them are just connected to, okay, if my sister asks me something and you come with diction and communicate to ask the same thing, I'll give my sister that thing first, even if my sister doesn't speak well. Why? Because, that, it's because of the relationship. So you need to think about, okay, do I create a relationship first or do I ask someone who already has an established relationship who already built an established relationship with this person? Would I ask that person to talk on my behalf? So that sometimes you want to make requests. You want to ask people to do things. You want to ask people questions and you feel, oh, these people won't Will you create, do you have to create a relationship before you call them to order? Because some people just come to your inbox and the first thing they want to say for the first time is because they see something wrong with your post. Oh, I saw something, something, something. You, ought, you need to, the person will just feel, oh, you haven't commented on my post on Instagram before now. You haven't liked my post before. My you don't buy my product. You don't ask me to render any of my services. But the first time you come into my DM is to tell me there is something that I have to fix in my post. I would just think you're there to police me. You sometimes I saw a post shared by one influencer, and that person went to the influencer's post to say, Oh, you should take care of yourself. You're too fat. You should take care of your weight. I'm not trying to attack you, you know, the way people say these things, and then they say, I'm not trying, it's not as if then the influencer shared the screenshot and that really blew my mind the that person just followed the influencer you know uh let's say uh kafayat this is kafayat okay biz lady eight biz lady eight just followed you and then biz lady eight mentioned you in the comment you're too fat you know it's just as if you came to that if, if that may not be the person's intent it may not be the person's intent to follow you. It may just, okay, you just followed, you know, when you follow someone, you would want to go through the person's page. And then, oh, you feel like, oh, this person is really, really fat and you really need to take care of your health. But because you need to give it time, you don't need to hasten that correction. Like, oh, I have to correct. If you need to build a relationship, you need to, if you, if it's, you, you may have, you may even give your feedback a month after knowing that person, after creating that relationship. So the person knows, oh, this person is not my friend. This person in, is in my space. And the person actually wants to correct me. Yeah, you have something to say before I continue? Uh, okay, so um, uh, for in, my, in my own experience, uh, I mean, I don't want to repeat all you said. Let me just say something different. So I have people... Okay. Maybe uh, mostly women. <laughs> they send me a message <laughs> that uh, my partner, my partner has bad breath, mouth odor. How do I tell him? How do I tell him? Uh, well, I'm not, a, I'm not a marriage counselor, so the little I know is that I tell, I tell them to just, um, just tell, schedule an appointment, a dental appointment, and tell the person to escort you. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> you can do the issues without even discussing them. Yes, so... That's my third <laughs> point. 
dealing <laughs> with these issues without even discussing the issues. So I just decided, oh, let's go. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. So have you ever had the experience? Has anyone actually oh, yeah, taken so, that? So, so there, was this, um, there was this lady, she reached out to me that she wanted to come in for cleaning. She wanted to come with her husband and children. So, um, I mean, I saw the children first, then I saw the husband next. And next. actually, when I saw the husband, I mean, he had a lot of this calculus oh. uh, in his mouth. Yet, I mean, so we have this intraoral camera. Okay, he used to take pictures of what is going on in your mouth and display it on the screen. Yeah. So the other one just looked at the wife. He said, I know this appointment was, was for me. <laughs> 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 no, but then, I mean, at that point, she came, the husband, the children. So, I mean, it just wasn't an insultive um, environment. Exactly. So you can also deal with issues without even discussing the issue. Exactly, exactly. You don't even have discussion in the first place. Then th this is not exclusive to dental care or other things. It may be body odor. You can just book an appointment with someone else that you already discussed with and mm -hmm. you get this. But you have something in mind and you feel, oh, I can't tell this person. I My, who is that? Someone is asking. Okay. Mesa... Mesca Chitodo, do you want to join the live session? You're sending a request. So you don't have, to, it's not compulsory that you have the discussion with the person. You can just book an appointment with someone that will help you get results. So I have the same issues and it's also marital and relationship This People tell me, oh, my fiance can't speak good English. <laughs> Please, my fiance has problems with regard to her accent or his accent. And but it doesn't. They usually, I think that is more. It's not really. It's it won't hurt the person. If so, I have an English class for you that you can register for, and I want you to build. It's not really that sensitive. So it usually happens that the fiance pays, and the person that is affected enrolls, and we get the results for them thereafter. I think that's all. We discussed everything that needs to be discussed, and it's already. One hour gone, more than one hour, six minutes past one hour. Thank you very much for coming, Doctor. Thank you so really, much. Really <laughs> Please, do you have questions? If you have questions, ask your questions in the comment section. Let's have the questions and then say goodbye thereafter. Thank you very much for coming. It seems no one has. If you're watching this as a replay, feel free to drop your questions and we will be there to give you your feedback depending on your question. Thank you very much for coming, Doctor. Have a nice Thank night so rest. Much. So this Thank is Saturday night on Twitter. Every Saturday at 8.30 p.m. Join me. I will discuss an issue a topic, specific topic, and help you get results in one hour. My name is Abdulbaki Hassan, and I was joined by our doctor, Dr. Ibrahim Akibami. Thanks for joining in. Bye Thank for now. Okay. <laughs>